Well, hey guys, I hope your week is going well and I hope you're excited for this video because many of you have requested that I review Revision Skincare. Uh, so I have several of the products as well as some samples. I thought I would go through the products that I have, talk about the ingredients and tell you, of course, what I think about them and if they are worth it. Uh, I bought these myself, uh, aside from the samples, which were free with purchase, and um, this video is not sponsored. Uh, if you're not familiar with Revision Skincare, it is medical grade skincare. Medical grade skincare is a type of marketing of skincare or cosmetics in which the manufacturer picks licensed distributors, aka physicians or estheticians, to sell their products rather than going through a traditional brick and mortar store or an online shop. It saves the company a lot of money and it also creates this consumer appeal on that you're getting something expert approved, whether it be doctor approved, esthetician approved, you're getting something medical grade. But the medical grade behind it is very misleading. These are not medications, they're not prescription drugs, they're cosmetics. Uh, and so the idea that you're getting something that is it's going to necessarily benefit your skin over what you can get in the drugstore is misleading, but that's how they do it. And they really jack up the price of these products a lot. And honestly, for the most part, they're really not anything that is unique from what you could get in the drugstore. With the exception of in a few cases, sometimes they put a lot more R&D into their active ingredients. Uh, so if you're seeking a cosmeceutical ingredient like vitamin C serum or a uh, retinol instead of a prescription re retinoid, uh, you know, they may, they may be a better choice. But who's to say they, they are or they aren't? It's really, it's really just, you know, their claim over, over anyone else's. But uh, Revision Skincare is a medical grade skincare company. They sell in a lot of physicians' offices, estheticians. Um, so starting off, I, like I said, I have some samples and some, some full-size stuff that I've used. So I'll just start off with the Brightening Facial Wash. This is a cleanser that has salicylic acid in it, which is a beta-hydroxy acid that concentrates in the oily areas of the skin, like around the nose and inside the pores. It's really helpful for acne and is helpful for oiliness. It can control sebum a little bit. And it's one of the active ingredients in a wash form that is, is still effective. I get that question a lot, like is beta-hydroxy acid, how can it work in a wash form? Aren't you just rinsing it off? And it, it, it can. The way it's useful is you just lather it onto the, the affected area, like your face, for example, and you let it sit on the skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off. The beta hydroxy acid is lipid soluble and it diffuses into your oil gland pretty quickly and goes to work there. And so it doesn't just rinse off and it is effective that way and tends to be less irritating. And it's nice to use a beta hydroxy acid wash, not only for kind of oily acne, acne concerns, but also it sort of can prep your face to uptake certain active ingredients a little bit more readily just by lightly exfoliating the skin. Um, this product also has alpha hydroxy acid in it. Alpha hydroxy acid, unlike uh, beta hydroxy acid, is water soluble and honestly it's really not super effective in a wash form. It mostly acts, rather than acting as an exfoliant in a wash form, it really just kind of acts as a humectant to help lock onto a little bit of water onto your skin as it's, as it's hitting your skin, but it mostly just goes down the drain. So it's kind of a useless ingredient in a wash. The alpha hydroxy acid in this cleanser is glycolic acid. Um, as with any alpha hydroxy acid, beta hydroxy acid product, you don't wanna put this around your eyes or around your mouth. I think that's one thing where consumers get really confused with these washes is they think that they're facial cleansers and you might try and use this like around your eyes to remove your eye makeup at night and you shouldn't do that. It'll cause a lot of swelling and irritation in those areas. Um, in addition to those active ingredients, it also has licorice root extract in it, which is anti-inflammatory, soothing for redness. But again, in a wash form, it's kind of questionable as to how effective that is. Unfortunately, the bugaboo about this cleanser, you guys know, I'm gonna point it out, is it has fragrance in it. 
and I'm just using it myself. It uh, kind of has a smell of a hand soap. <laughs> uh, so I kind of got like a citrusy scent to it. Fragrance is not ideal in skincare whatsoever. It can cause allergic contact dermatitis, irritant contact dermatitis. It can predispose you to developing problems to other ingredients. So it makes you more sensitive to other active ingredients more, and those other ingredients more likely to be sensitizing in the presence of fragrance. Fragrance will degrade and make everything in the product more unstable and more irritating. So it's best to never put fragrance in things. In wash forms though, it's a little less risky because you're washing it off and it's not being left on the skin. But if you have fragrance allergy, you have to avoid it and it really just doesn't have much of a role. So they put that in there, which I'm not happy about. But other than that, you know, it's not too bad. And it's a nice BHA cleanser, but honestly at $31.50, pretty expensive for something that you're mostly just washing down the drain. You can get a similar, you can achieve a similar, um, uh, similar goals with La Roche-Posay's Effaclair Duo, Effaclair Medicated Gel Cleanser. This has 2% salicylic acid in it. It also has L'Oreal's um, patented LHA, which is a modified version of salicylic acid that can penetrate a little bit more deeply into the skin. Uh, so this is a good drugstore choice that does the exact same thing as, as a brightening facial wash will, except it doesn't have fragrance. Unfortunately, this product does have menthol in it, which can be irritating and sting and is not a great ingredient. An alternative to this that's even more affordable is the ZapZid uh, facial cleanser. I'll list these down below for you guys, but those are much more affordable and do the same thing and you can get them at the drugstore. Um, so uh, yeah, but otherwise not, not a bad product. Moving on to a product that I really didn't use too much personally, but I honestly can't say too much negative about is their Revox 7 Peptide Serum. This is a peptide humectant gel serum product that you should put onto your face uh, after cleansing, actually while the face is still damp. I'm not sure they specify that in their instructions, but that's how I would advise you to use it because this is a product that uses peptides. Peptides are humectants. They really lock in water onto the surface of the skin, so it's best to use it while the skin is wet. They mostly function as humectants, meaning they hold water into the skin. They can really plump up your skin, hydrate your skin, and in doing so, sort of start to improve the look of fine lines. Manufacturers can kind of mix and match different peptides and achieve kind of different densities, and you really can get a good hydrating effect with a lot of these peptide products. And uh, so, you know, personally, I really enjoyed using the Color Science Pep Up product. It has 10 peptides. The Revision one has seven uh, different peptides. So, you know, just a slight difference. Uh, but it's a, these products are expensive. Peptide serums are expensive. They, 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 the outcome you get with them is more hydration in the skin. But I mean, honestly, you can really get that with a basic moisturizer. Um, but this is fragrance free and it's otherwise a good choice. Like, uh, you know, I can't say too much about too many negative things about it. It is 130 bucks though. Uh, so there's that. If you use this, not only should you use it onto the skin when it's wet, like I said, to hold on to water, but don't use it by itself. You have to use it underneath a moisturizer. And the moisturizer they have is the DEJ face cream that I have here. This is an all-in-one age-defying moisturizer. They advise you to use this twice a day, which I think is a pretty good recommendation, especially if you're using the Revox 7, the peptide serum, and you wanna use that twice a day to a wet face. Uh, double stacking the peptide serum with this, I think is a really good approach. But this is just a basic kind of moisturizer. It's got some unique ingredients in it. It has ceramides. I've talked about ceramides in my moisturizer videos before. Ceramides are a key component of our lipid barrier. They become deficient as we get older, wiser, and in conditions of dry skin, if you have irritated skin. Uh, and putting ceramides on your skin in your moisturizers can help your body start to make some, some of its own ceramides again and get, get barrier restoration back on track. This also has peptides in it as well, so you've got that in there as, a huma as humectants. And it's got um, alpha-glucans. Alpha-glucans are um, rich, again, in humectants, but they also have some ingredients to them, components to them that are thought to function as 
prebiotics. I have a video talking about the role of prebiotics and probiotics in skincare. It's an area of interest, active research. The research is compelling in terms of how utilizing those ingredients might impact and benefit the microbiome of your skin. Uh, and so this has that in there, but you know, again, it is an area that's pretty new in terms of research development and how useful it is, is still TBD. But they put that in there as another benefit. Um, unfortunately, this product has sandalwood in it. Sandalwood is an essential oil that you will find in a lot of skincare products. In fact, it's even in the PCA Skin Pigment Bar that I reviewed for you guys in the past and rather enjoyed myself. That product, I'll remind you, is a is a soap that is washed off, you know, rinsed off. So the sandalwood is less of an issue in that. Sandalwood is is an essential oil, and essential oils are you know, kind of like fragrance in that they can be irritating, be sensitized to them, and they can cause problems. But sandalwood as an essential oil is one that has, has been used in more traditional medicine for a long time in skincare. And there are some small laboratory studies looking at, does it have any beneficial outcomes as far as skin? It's antibacterial, it's anti-inflammatory, and it has some, some antioxidants as well uh, within it. So it's thought to you know maybe be something that could be useful, but there are a lot of reports of irritant contact dermatitis and allergic contact dermatitis to sandalwood. So that would not be my choice. You know, I I would say that the face cream would be better without that in it, but otherwise it's pretty good. Um, it's very lightweight, so if you have really dry skin, you might find that this is not quite enough of a moisturizer, but it's it's pretty good. It's just a nice lightweight moisturizer. Personally, you can get, I, I would say, you can get some of the same benefits, although the moisturizer is not as lightweight as this, with the CeraVe Skin Renewing Night Cream. I don't know if you guys got peptides in it, it's got ceramides in it. Uh, that one's got shea butter in it, which is rich in antioxidants, good for st restoring the barrier of the skin. And there's no fragrance in that. So I would actually recommend that over this, but it is a lot heavier. So if you want something more lightweight, I think you might be happier with this. Okay, they have an eye cream. You can't have a skincare line without an eye cream. Otherwise, you're just, you know, you're losing money left and right. Eye creams sell like hotcakes, but as I've told you guys before, you don't need an eye cream. Uh, they are one of the things you definitely can skip. They are not necessary, and more often than not, they tend to cause more problems than they're worth. Uh, they can cause irritation, and they can cause eyelid dermatitis, as I mentioned in my eyelid dermatitis Q&A to you guys. I don't recommend chasing eye creams whatsoever. The Revision DEJ eye cream is sort of very similar to the, um, the DEJ face cream. It does not have sandalwood in it, however. It's got peptides in it. It's got alpha-glucan, again, the prebiotic. But real quick, uh, the next product that I'll talk about is the DEJ Night Cream. This is a retinol night cream. Retinols, I have videos talking about retinols. Retinols are vitamin A derivatives that you'll find in e I mean, every cosmeceutical line out there has got to have. Not only do you have to have an eye serum, but you have to have a retinol. Retinols are... Uh, vitamin A derivatives that, that that have been shown to be helpful for improving the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, removing sun damaged skin cells, uh, collagen turnover, really some wonderful beneficial properties. But the problem with retinols is they're not the vitamin A derivative in its active state that your skin can really use. The vitamin A derivatives that are that way are uh, tretinoin, um, or which is brand name Retin-A, or Tazerac, or Adapalene, brand name different that you can buy in the drugstore. Retinols, your skin has to do two steps on it, and the retinol has to get into the skin. So there's a lot of hoops that retinols have to jump through in order for them to be effective. I'm not saying they're not, and we do have good evidence that some people do get good benefit from using a retinol. They're less irritating than the more bioactive forms like tretinoin for example, less irritation with cosmeceutical retinols. Um, but in my opinion, you know, if you don't want to use one of those more active vitamin A derivatives like adapalene, tretinoin, or 
or tazeratine is too irritating for you. Another better alternative, in my opinion, to retinol is retinaldehyde. I have a video talking about the differences between retinaldehyde and retinol. And retinaldehyde is, is one foot in the door, basically, to being the bioactive form. So your skin has to do a little less work on it and it's more active than retinol. So the product I have used and recommend is the Avan Retrin AL. So check out that video if you're interested in that. But this has their uh, retinol 0.25%. It is uh, encapsulated, so that's thought to help it get into the skin a little bit better and keep it stable. In addition to that, this also has Bakuchiol in it. I talked about Bakuchiol um, as a side note in my video on the Drunk Elephant A Passioni Cream, but Bakuchiol is a plant-derived ingredient that is uh, rich in antioxidants and has been shown in laboratory studies to uh, induce some of the same uh, kind of gene changes as retinols do, but is less irritating. And importantly, Bakuchiol has also been shown to stabilize retinol. So it's nice that they include that for added stability of their retinol and you get a little added antioxidant bang for your buck if if that's worth anything in this product, hard to say for sure if it is. But you're getting those two ingredients together in this, so I think it makes it a little bit more of a better bet than you might find in any other over-the-counter retinol that doesn't have the Bakuchiol in it, so you're getting a little bit extra there. And this product uh, also has the ceramides in it, so you know it has some good active ingredients for getting at the skin barrier. Uh, it's 150 bucks, which is pretty expensive. Uh, not, not too, too bad though. Uh, if you want to try retinol, I don't see anything wrong with that. Oh, other than it does have the sandalwood in it. So the sandalwood could be a problem, but otherwise, uh, not too much negative to say about the night, the night cream with the retinol. All right, so those are some of the nighttime products. I will just talk about the two sunscreens that I've tried for you guys. First up is the multi-protection. SPF 50, broad spectrum SPF 50. I'm just gonna jump in here right off the bat and cut you off and say skip this. It is 67 bucks and it's nothing but a chemical sunscreen, a weak chemical sunscreen. All right, if you're new here, here's the deal with chemical sunscreens that are sold in the US. We have very few filters that are approved for inclusion in chemical sunscreens in the States. And the filters that we have that protect our skin from the rays that penetrate deeply, annihilate the collagen in our skin and, and contribute to aging, UVA, the filter that we have to protect us from that is called avabenzone. You can find it in any chemical sunscreen in, in America, in, in any store. Uh, that ingredient, uh, while it does a decent job protecting you against UVA uh, as an ingredient, unfortunately, it degrades upon exposure to UV light, so you begin to lose UVA coverage with that ingredient. So chemical sunscreens, they're just not super reliable as far as their broad spectrum coverage that they offer. And, you know, so that being said, you're plunking down 67 bucks and you can go into the drugstore and find a chemical sunscreen for far less than that. As a matter of fact, I recommend the Trader Joe's SPF 30 chemical sunscreen over this because it's so cheap and has the same filters and it's gonna offer you, you know, pretty similar protection. Granted, this is SPF 50, so you get a little bit more SPF, uh, but uh, not to justify that $67 price point. And, and the other reason you've got to skip this is it has fragrance in it. Fragrance, I already, you know, I tell you in all my videos how, how foul it is, but it's particularly foul. It can degrade some of those fragrance ingredients that become these like irritants on your skin and they make the sunscreen even more irritating and they can cause photo irritant rashes where, that, that you get as a result of the combination of the fragrance and some of the sunscreen filters just being super irritating. So always choose a fragrance-free sunscreen. If you if you are somebody who is still on the fence about eliminating fragrance, please start with your sunscreen. Go fragrance-free there. So I don't recommend the that, that one. It's an overpriced chemical sunscreen with fragrance. Skip that. Um, which brings me to the next sunscreen, the IntelliShade True Physical. 
This is actually worth worth your money if you're interested in it, I would say, and it's much a much better choice than that chemical one I just mentioned. It is a mineral sunscreen that is tinted. Uh, it's 75 bucks, super expensive, but you know, it's medical grade skincare, so they can jack up the price of, of things like that. But it's a mineral sunscreen, so it's got zinc and titanium dioxide. Those do not degrade upon exposure to UV, so you have you have more insurance in your skin, uh, in your sunscreen, protect in your sun protection. Uh, but not only does it have zinc titanium dioxide in it, but it has iron oxides. Iron oxides are an inactive ingredient you'll frequently find in tinted sunscreens. That is an unsung hero because it, along with zinc and titanium, can protect against some of those really broad wavelengths of light that start encroaching into visible light or blue light. But blue light from those devices, and by and large more so from, from the sun, blue light can contribute to hyperpigmentation. And so using sunscreens that have mineral actives and iron oxides can really give you good protection against that blue light that contributes to hyperpigmentation and melasma and sunspots. So if you're trying to get rid of some sunspots, fade them, choosing a tinted mineral sunscreen is smart. I wish this $75 one was water resistant. That would, that would be, you know, that would really bring it full circle as far as what it offers, but it is fragrance free. Personally, I am biased. I think the Color Science Mineral Face Shield is a much better value. You're getting all of those benefits in a water resistant mineral sunscreen. So I would recommend that one. Coats is a much better value as well. A mineral sunscreen with the iron oxides. Uh, so you have that. As far as the tint on this though, here's the thing. To me, these tinted sunscreens, they don't, they don't vary substantially as far as the tint, and it ain't universal. Meaning if you're a darker skin type, this is gonna show up on your skin as something that's not desirable to you. The whole thing about tinting that you know people are happy with is that they, they think it will mask that white cast of the sunscreen. If you are fair skin, there won't be a white cast with this, and you will enjoy some light coverage with the tint. But if you are a darker skin type, you're gonna kinda of have that muddy, muddy ashen look from this that is still not right. So don't don't plunk down 75 bucks if you are a woman of color thinking this is gonna work for you. It might not. I would definitely suggest the Coats uh, Sensitive Tinted Sunscreen. I'll list it down below for you guys. I think it's called the Coats Natural. That tends to be much, much better for darker skin types and it's much more affordable. So I would go for that one. But yeah, not a bad product and you know, that's one that I would happily use on a daily basis. Which brings me to the last product, which you all know I don't use these, but um, I get asked about them uh, from time to time and I have it. It is the C Correcting Complex 30%. Uh, this is their vitamin C serum. And you guys know I don't use vitamin C topically, vitamin C serums or go out of my way to use them because vitamin C, while we've got a lot of research showing how it can be beneficial for the skin, for decreasing some of the sun-related damage that um, our skin goes through and for reducing hyperpigmentation related to the sun, as well as for strengthening some of the deeper layers of the skin. Really compelling as an antioxidant in terms of things it can offer the skin. But we have yet to find a really stable form of vitamin C that effectively gets into the skin. It's not super stable, it oxidizes readily, it can be very irritating. So manufacturers are tasked with formulating it to get into the skin. And because it's a cosmeceutical and not regulated, they can claim that they've got the most stable, most effective form, and we're just left to, to pay the price they're asking for it and hope that it works. But I can never say what vitamin C serum is better than any other. But this one has 30% tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate in it, THD, I'll call it. Uh, I want to make sure I didn't say THC. THD, 
is a lipid soluble form of vitamin C. You'll recall from my vitamin C serum video and other videos I've talked about how L-ascorbic acid is water soluble and it's the most bioavailable, bioactive form of vitamin C, but because it is water soluble, it's really hard for it to diffuse through the waxy layer of our skin. That's a limitation in, in that. So they've got, um, they've come out with a few lipid soluble forms of vitamin C and this is one. Um, I believe Kylie's uh, vitamin C serum, Kylie Skin vitamin C serum also has one of the lipid stable forms of, of vitamin C. So, you know, that is in the same vein. Uh, what can I tell you about THD specifically though? It has been shown in a small study of Japanese women to suppress uh, sun-induced hyperpigmentation. Uh, and then there was another study that looked at 10, a whopping 10 patients, this was published in 2002, that looked at a product that was a mixture of 7% THD and 10% ascorbic acid, which is the water soluble form. So they combined the two, the lipid soluble and the water soluble. In those 10 subjects, the subjects put this, this vitamin C mambo combo on one half of their face, and on the other half of their face, they put the vehicle, which is the just the, the gel, the cream, without the vitamin C's in it. So no ascorbic acid, no THD. And the study showed that at the end of, I believe, 12 weeks, there was an improvement in the appearance of wrinkles, and they also had some biopsy, uh, bi skin biopsy showing new collagen formation. But again, that product was a mambo combo of the lipid soluble and the water soluble. So, you know, kind of hard to say for sure. This, however, is just the THD, just the lipid soluble one, and it's a pretty high concentration of 30%. Uh, you know, a lot of the vitamin C studies that we do have on the water soluble ones suggest that. Uh, going higher than 20% is not any more effective and in fact is more irritating. And the take home point with vitamin C serums as you gotta re remember is they can be super irritating, very, very irritating. Uh, they tend to be very acidic, uh, it can be really irritating. So don't put it around your eyes um, and uh, you know, you shouldn't go near your eyes because it's very irritating. Uh, but the way to use it is you can actually use it twice a day. Uh, you just put it on your, your bare face and then put on your sunscreen over it in the morning and put your moisturizer on over it at nighttime. Uh, so I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Again, like honestly, don't fall for the hype of medical grade skincare. I think they're way overpriced for what they offer and you can get you know, a simple, effective skincare routine from the drugstore. You don't need to plunk down this kind of money on on these products the other thing i'll point out though is part of what you're paying for and, and a lot of this stuff let's be honest is the packaging and the packaging is kind of junky in my opinion it reminds me of like if you go into the um the travel the travel section in like walmart we can get all the 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 mini sizes of things to take uh, on the airplane like mini shampoos and stuff you know, they'll have little little bottles that you can buy to fill, to add your shampoo and whatnot to take with you. That's what these remind me of, those little travel travel pumps. I was not impressed with the packaging on this. Uh, you know, I hate to give that so much recognition because in the end of the day, it's like you want the product to work, but you also, you're, you're, you're plenty now pretty, pretty hefty price point. They put nothing into the packaging here. I mean, they, they really put nothing. It's just cheap packaging cheap marketing of medical grade skincare, like they don't have to pay much in terms of that. Like they just, they just ride on the coattails of the physician or the esthetician who is distributing it in terms of the medical grade appeal. And yeah, they charge a ton for these products. Uh, so yeah, at the end of the day, I don't recommend buying this stuff, but I can see how you might enjoy the, um, the IntelliShade. It's a decent mineral sunscreen, albeit expensive. And you know, the rest of the products are eh, so so, just wasn't, wasn't blown out of the water. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.